students uh, in today's video on antiemetics part 3 we will study pharmacology of h1 antihistaminics now commonly used antihistaminics are promethazine doxylamine maclizine cinarizine now all these uh, drugs are first generation h1 antihistaminics now these drugs easily cross a uh, blood brain barrier which is located in the central nervous system and antagonize or uh, they block H1 receptors uh, present both centrally as well as peripherally. Now look at this diagram. This diagram explains mechanism of action of H1 antihistaminics. Now as we all know vomiting center uh, is located in the medulla oblongata and stimulation of this vomiting center uh, results in the vomiting. Now the receptors which are located on the vomiting center are H1 histaminic receptors and muscarinic receptors. Now closely associated with the vomiting center is the chemoreceptor trigger zone uh, in short CTZ also called as the area postrema. It is located outside the blood brain barrier and it is easily stimulated by chemicals, chemotherapy, drugs like morphine, digoxin. Uh, chemoreceptor trigger zone is also stimulated by the presence of for example urea in the blood. So all these substances stimulate chemoreceptor trigger zone which further stimulates the vomiting center and this results in the vomiting. Now main receptors that are located on the chemoreceptor trigger zone are the H1 histaminic receptors, muscarinic receptors, uh, dopamine D2 receptors, 5-hydroxytryptamine that is 5-HT3 receptors, neurokinin 1 receptors, cannabinoid receptors. So once stimulated uh, chemoreceptor trigger zone stimulates the vomiting center that initiates the vomiting reflex and that results in the vomiting. Now apart from the chemicals and drugs, chemoreceptor trigger zone is also stimulated by impulses which are generated from the inner ear. Now inner ear or the vestibule or the vestibular apparatus generates impulses because of motion sickness. Motion sickness is also called as a travel sickness. Now during traveling one comes across repeated angular linear movements. Uh, the speed of the vehicle also increases and decreases. Uh, so these movements uh, in many individuals disturbs the organ of balance disturbs uh, the vestibular apparatus and uh, this results in the motion sickness. Now motion sickness produces symptoms like nausea, vomiting, cold sweats, hypersalivation, headache etc. Now these impulses which are generated by the inner ear due to the motion sickness are carried by the vestibulocochlear nerve to the vestibular nuclei located in the brain stem which are further carried to the chemoreceptor trigger zone and then to the vomiting center. Now histamine, H1 receptors and uh, muscarinic receptors are the major uh, receptors um, on the vestibular nuclei and histamine and acetylcholine are the major neurotransmitters in this pathway which transmit the impulses from the inner ear to the chemoreceptor trigger zone. Now one very important thing to note that H1 histaminic receptors are present uh, in a huge uh, number. They are present in a huge number or they are present in an enormous number on the vestibular nuclei compared to the number on the chemoreceptor trigger zone or the vomiting center. Now H1 antihistaminics shown here in the green color, they block uh, the histamine H1 receptors. Uh, H1 antihistaminics are the competitive antagonist um, of uh, histamine at H1 histamine receptors located at the vestibular nuclei. Now H1 antihistaminics block H1 receptors. They prevent binding of histamine to H1 receptors and therefore this causes prevention of transmission of impulses generated due to the motion sickness from the inner ear to the chemoreceptor trigger zone. So the impulses which are generated by the inner ear they are they could they could not uh, they cannot reach the chemoreceptor trigger zone because of the blockage of histamine H1 receptors located on the vestibular nuclei and thus uh, histamine H1 
uh, antagonist uh, they prevent nausea and vomiting induced by the motion sickness and since uh, histamine h1 receptors are present in a huge or enormous number on the vestibular nuclei uh, these drugs uh, they are the first choice drugs in the prevention and treatment of motion sickness now uh, the drugs that is uh, promethazine uh, doxylamine maclizine cinarizine these are all h1 receptor uh, antagonist and therefore these drugs are indicated in the treatment of motion sickness now promethazine doxylamine and uh, maclizine uh, also exhibit uh, anticholinergic property uh, they also block muscarinic receptors uh, which are located on the vestibular nuclei so this further adds up to their potential to be useful in the motion sickness now uh, promethazine uh, promethazine also uh, show dopamine d2 antagonism and thus promethazine is also useful in uh, chemotherapy induced nausea and vomiting and uh, post operative nausea and vomiting however uh, all the h1 antihistaminics are the first choice drugs in the treatment of motion or travel sickness uh, now all these drugs uh, that is a uh, promethazine doxylamine maclizine cinarizine all these drugs are h1 receptor antagonist and thus uh, all these drugs are indicated in uh, motion sickness now promethazine uh, doxylamine and maclizine also exhibit anticholinergic property uh, which further adds up to their potential to be useful in the treatment of motion sickness now further to this promethazine also shows uh, promethazine uh, then uh, maclizine and cinarizine also exhibit uh, d2 antagonist property uh, they also block uh, d2 receptors which are uh, located on chemoreceptor trigger zone now talking about the indications uh, motion sickness as discussed uh, antihistaminics are the first choice drugs uh, in the treatment of uh, motion sickness and then uh, uh, morning sickness uh, doxylamine is used uh, in controlling uh, morning sickness uh, that is a uh, nausea and vomiting of pregnancy but use of doxylamine is controversial in uh, morning sickness because uh, in 1981 it was withdrawn from the market because of some reports of fetal mal malformation however it is used in some countries in combination with uh, pyridoxine for the morning sickness now apart from this promethazine is also used in uh, chemotherapy induced nausea and vomiting and uh, post operative nausea and vomiting now uh, coming to the side effects now the very common uh, adverse effects of uh, all h1 antihistaminics are uh, drowsiness dizziness and fatigue now apart from this drugs like uh, promethazine also exhibits uh, additional anticholinergic uh, side effects uh, because they also block the muscarinic receptors. Uh, they also show side effects like uh, blurred vision, dry mouth, uh, then dilated pupil, constipation, uh, urinary retention. Now, apart from this, uh, drugs that block uh, or that antagonize the D2 receptors, they show uh, side effects due to D2 antagonism like uh, tardif dyskinesia, uh, that is involuntary repeated uh, jerky movements of uh, face and uh, uh, body then uh, d2 antagonist drugs uh, also exhibit uh, pseudo parkinsonism that is a drug induced parkinsonism then uh, uh, d2 uh, blockage of d2 receptors in the central nervous system can also result in acute dystonia characterized by um, involuntary contractions of uh, muscles of extremities face neck abdomen etc and therefore uh, the drugs uh, that uh, antagonize the d2 receptors um, is uh, not preferred uh, in the management of uh, nausea and vomiting so this is in brief on pharmacology of uh, h1 uh, antihistaminics as uh, antiemetics if you find the video useful kindly like subscribe and share this video
Very important, please note that uh, information provided in this video is meant exclusively uh, for the students from their examination point of view. Uh, kindly consult your physician for the treatment of nausea and vomiting. Thanks for watching this video.